Today is Thursday, May 7th, 2020. Here's our knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Alex. Alex who? I'll explain when you open the door. All right. Alex. Alex. And then I'm just going to write explain. But it's like this. I'll explain. That's what it really is trying to sound like. I'll explain. I'll explain when you open the door and then you'll put a period at the end of your sentence. Here's our puzzle of the day. Remember the rule. Every row, rows go side to side. Every column, columns go way up high. And every rectangle box can only have the numbers one, two, three, and four one time each. So let's start with the one that's the most full. A two, a one, a four. So that's a three, and that creates a one spot in this column. Three, two, four, so that's a one. And now it's getting tricky because we don't have anything. Oh, no, we do. Look, a four, a three, a two. Maybe you saw that already. So here's a one. And now it's getting tricky because we have two spots here, two spots here, two spots here, two here, two here, two here. Do you see how that's a little bit harder? So... Let's use the process of elimination. We have a four and we have a one. So we know we still have to put a two and a three in these two boxes. But we can see there's already a two in this row. So we know the two can't go there. So the two will have to go here. And that means there'll be a three here. Which means we now have two more spots that have just one space open each. And then after doing that, there'll be two more spots with, um, with or two more columns with just one space open each. And so I'm going to let you finish that on your own. Day 157, our morning work. Number one, ready, go. Partition a circle into thirds and shade two thirds. So this is the one that's kind of like a peace sign. We go down to the middle and we go out this way and we go out this way. So that's one, two, three. Those are thirds because there are three parts. Thirds. Now we need to shade two of them. So you can shade any two you want. I'm going to shade that one and this one. Yours might look different. Number two, ready, go. Which belongs in the blank? I like Mesepa's shoes. I like Mesepa's shoes or I like Mesepa shoes. All right. It might be Masipa because um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but that's a student um, that's been in Ms. Garrison's class. Um, so in order to show ownership, you need to have apostrophe S. You know that rule already. Number three, ready, go. Which two words have almost the same meaning? So if they have almost the same meaning, they are synonyms. Big and small, those are opposite antonyms. Red and purple, those are just colors. They're, aren't, they aren't antonyms or synonyms. They don't mean close to the same. Mad and angry. So mad can mean angry and angry can be mad. Almost the same meaning. Those are synonyms and you spell synonyms like this. It's a fun spelling with two Y's in it. Up and sky. So the sky is up, but those don't mean the same thing or almost the same. Number four, ready, go. Loot had 205 cats. Some ran away. Now he has 67 left. How many cats ran away? So the way we will set that problem up, we can circle the important numbers. Had means it's something that he started with. Some ran away. So that would tell you that they were he wasn't keeping them, they were going away. And then underline the question, how many cats ran away? So we will start with a number bond. He had 205, 67 left, and we don't know how many ran away, or 67 is what he has left, we don't know how many ran away. Minus on the lines and plus in the middle. So we circle the numbers, and we know we're going to subtract two or subtract 67 from 205. And then we'll set up 
a place value chart, hundreds, tens, ones, and then we will build the first number, 200, no tens, and five ones. One, two, three, four, five. Now we need to subtract 67. So first we always start with the ones. We can't subtract seven ones from five ones, and so we need to unbundle a 10, except, oh no, there are no tens to unbundle. So what do we do next? We unbundle 100, bring it over to the tens, and line those tens up nice and straight. 10 tens, we're in that bundled up 100. Now we can unbundle a 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you see I crossed out the ten that we unbundled? Because they are represented by these ten ones over here. Now we can subtract seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left. We have eight ones. I'm going to write it up here because I'm out of space down here. And then we need to subtract six tens. Here are our tens already un um, conveniently unbundled from the hundred and we used one of them already so that one is gone that one's over here as our ones and so we need to subtract six more tens one two three four five six and then we have three tens left and then we're not subtracting any hundreds so we keep that 100 so 138 cats ran away all right, on to our song of the day, our poem song, and it's about oceans. Look at that big ocean. You could color that with so many different colors of green and blue today. And we're singing about landforms still. The ocean is a landform, and we sing it to the tune of For He's a Jolly Good Fellow. A massive body of water that covers most of the earth and all the water is salty, that's what an ocean is. Pacific, Indian, Arctic, Atlantic, and the Antarctic. They're all bodies of water, that's what the ocean is. There was my voice warm-up for the day. All right, sing or say that two or three more times.